So remember the 2020 election and how late that night, right, it became pretty clear that Joe Biden was on a trajectory to win that election. And Donald Trump comes out and gives a news conference saying that the election's been robbed from him. And then over the next few days and weeks, Donald Trump keeps harping on that the election was stolen from him and he just couldn't get any elite support, right? Republicans, by and large, did not follow him. And th there were no great lawyers who were willing to take up his cause. And his whole operation to try to deny the election result was just abysmal. I mean, it was just ludicrous. It was just schlock, right? And I was thinking about that. And then after January 6, how overwhelmingly Republicans abandoned him, wanted nothing to do with Trump. Uh, elites 100% abandoned Trump after January 6. He was banned on Twitter and Facebook and YouTube and all across social media, just universal condemnation. And there's a very different reaction today to his conviction, right? Republican legal elites overwhelmingly did not side. 100% of Republican legal elites did not side with Donald Trump in his challenge for the 2020 election. But overwhelmingly, they are siding with Donald Trump with regard to his 34 felony convictions in New York City. I mean, they are just solidly lining up behind him. Now, the non-Republican legal experts and mainstream media journalists covering the trial, right, they are obviously happy that uh, Donald Trump was convicted and they don't make the same points that uh, Republican legal elites are making about how the trial was a travesty. But there is one key word that the dominant liberal left elites are using, and that is that the prosecutor Alvin Bragg's legal theory underlying the case is weak and is the most likely grounds for appeal and the most likely successful grounds for appeal. So they don't like to talk very much about how the conviction of Trump was based on a very weak legal theory.